Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. Uh, any questions before we get to business? Any questions? Yes? Okay. 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 What does it say? <laughs> Here. Oh. Hey, yeah, that's, that's probably. It says. Okay. So uh, I would guess. <coughs> We got the confusing bit. Uh, the confusing bit uh, is when I say z factors. Well, I understood that because we went over that in the, I think, the first day of lecture. Okay. I was just confused about what exactly you were asking. I okay. Didn't understand the question. Uh, well, so let's consider for a moment. Uh, we want uh, the, the sum product technique asks for you to find two numbers whose product is what for this specific example? Negative 40 and whose sum is what for this specific example? Negative 8. So let's consider all of the integer factors of 40. Uh, uh, of negative 40 I mean to say. So how about negative 1 and positive 40? Do those add? No. They don't. Uh, how about uh, negative 2 and positive 20? Do those, add, do, do those w w win? They don't. Uh, and what I want you to demonstrate is that all such pairs, where both of them are integers, fail. Now, it is, it is not the case that there's no numbers whatsoever that multiply to be negative 40 and add to be negative 8. There are numbers that do it. But there aren't any there aren't any integers that do it, which is which is what I want you to demonstrate uh, on part C. <coughs> that reminded me of a question on the uh, online homework that asked us to use a binomial <coughs> something or other. Yeah, and then I watched the video and it was something I had never seen before. Okay, well that's why I, in in the announcement uh, about whatever number homework number that was, uh, I said that. Um, Every time that you see the phrase binomial theorem, you can just replace that with Pascal's triangle. Sorry, I <clears throat> Which is what I did. Yeah, okay, good. So, like any, like any important thing, uh, uh, Pascal's triangle has a lot of... Pascal's triangle has more than one name, right? Uh, you know... On the one hand, you've got Pascal's triangle, and then you've got the related concept of things about binomial theorem. It's just, it's just how it is. Like, polynomials of degree 2 are so important that they have a special name. Their name is quadratics. Okay. Other questions before we get to business? Yes? So, to find more examples, say, online of, was it Pascal? Pascal. Possibly. Um, well, honestly, I'm not. I'm not really sure what Google search would turn up the thing that you want. I, I'm not really sure. But uh, you know. Um, I, I make the notes. I post, I post three different of these. You could look through those, because when I make an exercise, usually I'm just randomly choosing numbers. So, so if you look through the three different sets of notes, like these are the notes for section 002. By the way, you see that that's centered now? <laughs> uh, this, these are the notes for section 002, uh, but there's also notes for 001 and 003. That might help. Um, 
Also, in the online homework, do you ever do practice version? Practicing the version? Yeah, yeah. On the online homeworks, when you're doing them, there's a link somewhere that says try another version. Yeah, that, that, may, that may be a good way to go. <clears throat> Other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, so now we're in section uh, 1.6, which is called rational functions. Uh, no, rational expressions. Uh, so, in this case, uh, the word rational is referring to ratio, uh, like a fraction. Unfortunately, we're not talking about expressions who happen to be philosophers. I think that would have been more interesting, but, uh, but it's not the case. So, specifically, a <coughs> rational expression uh, is the ratio of two polynomials. Okay, so we've been talking about polynomials, multiplying, collecting like terms, uh, distributing, uh, factoring. We've been doing a lot of polynomial stuff. Uh, now we're talking about expressions where there's two polynomials playing around, and one of them is in the denominator and one of them is in the numerator. So, for example, uh, the, quest the, the, the question is, is, uh, is it a rational expression? That's the question. So how about um, <clears throat> how about uh, 13 times x plus 14 divided by 20 times x plus 18? So is it a rational expression? So the question is, uh, in, the, in the first place, is it a fraction? It is. Uh, then, once you've established that, is it the case that the numerator is a polynomial? It is, right? Uh, so concerning that uh, numerator, uh, what's the degree of, since it's a polynomial, you can tell me its degree. Its degree one, and what's its leading coefficient? 13. So the numerator is a polynomial. Is the denominator a polynomial? Okay, what's its degree? What's its leading coefficient? So is this a rational expression? Okay. Uh, how about, um, hmm, how about uh, 3 over 5 times x squared uh, plus 9 times x. Is that a rational expression? Yes, <laughs> it is. Because it's the same three questions. And if you get a no to any one of them, you can stop. So the first question is, is it a fraction? Yes. 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 OK. Is the denominator a polynomial? Yes. What's the degree of the denominator? Two. Two. That's the, the, asking questions about the degree is not relevant to the question of whether or not it's a rational expression. I'm just asking these additional questions. So the denominator is degree two. Uh, what's the leading coefficient of the denominator? Five. What's the constant coefficient of the denominator? Zero, right? Because the constant coefficient is is the term uh, that has no x's, right? So you you could you could uh, understand that expression to be five times x squared 
plus 9 times x plus 0. You could understood it, un understand it to mean that, and in, in that case, that, that means the constant coefficient is 0. Okay. So concerning this expression that we're examining, uh, we asked, is it a fraction? The answer was yes. We asked, uh, is the denominator a polynomial? The answer is yes. So the sticking point, where some of you are a little bit shaky, is, uh, is 3 a polynomial? And the answer is yes. 3 is a polynomial. It's yes. Uh, c since it's a polynomial, you should be able to tell me its degree. What's its degree? Zero. Zero. Right? Because, like, for this one, for the numerator there, what is the highest power of x? One. one. So it's degree one. And concerning this denominator, what is the highest power of x? Two. So it's degree two. And then this, well, you could understand that to be 3 multiplied by x to 0, because x to 0 is 1. So what's the degree of the numerator? 0. What's the leading coefficient of the numerator? 3. What's the constant coefficient of the numerator? 3. <laughs> the leading coefficient is 3. The constant coefficient is 3. It's a little bit weird, you know. But that's just how it is. So uh, is this, so in the end, is this a rational expression? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so how about, uh, how about uh, 3 multiplied by x squared plus 5? Is this a rational expression? Nah, there you go. Right? So, uh, it is, this expression, is this thing is equivalent to writing 3 multiplied by x squared plus 5, divide by 1. So then we went carefully through the previous uh, one. So is this a rational expression? Yes. Yeah, for similar reasons, right? The numerator, I think, obviously is a polynomial. Uh, the denominator, once you are comfortable with the definition of polynomial, yes, the, the, the denominator is a polynomial. It's the constant polynomial with leading coefficient 1. <coughs> Good. So I think the, the question is probably addressed what is it a polynomial? Here it comes. <laughs> so uh, how, about, how about this rational expression, the square root, uh, this expression. The square root of x divided by uh, 4 times x squared minus 7. So is this a rational expression? No. It's not going to be. So is it a fraction? Yes. Uh, is the denominator a polynomial? Yes. Is the numerator a polynomial? It is not. It's not. Uh, it's not because, well, let's recall uh, that square root of x can be expressed as x to some exponent. What exponent? Half. And polynomials uh, have x's to exponents, like that has x to exponent 1, and that has x to exponent 2, etc. <coughs> and this one has an exponent, x to half. I mean, it's got an exponent. Why is it not a polynomial? Not an integer. Okay, so polynomials, uh, in polynomials, all exponents. must be natural. So integer is not OK because, for example, negative 5 uh, is an integer. And then I guess I'll write 
natural or zero. It messes me up all the time because, you know, math instructors at university have to teach multiple math classes and depending on which class and what, which book and whatever you're using, sometimes the naturals include zero or not. In this class, they don't. Uh, fine. So, not a rational expression. How about this one? Is that a rational expression? Yes? I don't know. I asked about the previous one and there was a radical and then we said no and I'm, now I'm all anxious because there's radicals. <laughs> okay. So how about it? It is. It is a rational expression. So remember, there's three questions. Is it a fraction? Yeah. Is the denominator a polynomial? Yes. Is the numerator a polynomial? Yes. It is. So the answer is yes, because square root of 5 times x, after all, could be expressed as, well, square root of 5 and then multiplied by x to what exponent? 1. And is 1 a natural? It is. That's natural. And then this, that's the coefficient. The only requirement for the coefficient is that it's real. Is square root of 5 real? Sure. OK. Any question about what's the rational expression? OK. <clears throat> So now, uh, now that we've established what a rational expression uh, is, the first order of business is to discuss the definition of natural domain. <coughs> okay, so the natural domain of an expression in variable x <clears throat> now I'm writing x just to be definite but do understand that there's nothing sacred about x I could just as well write in variable w or w what have you uh, the natural domain of an expression in variable x is uh, the largest uh, set of x's for which the expression is defined. Defined, that needs to be a D. Okay, now that's kind of a weird thing to say. So let's uh, try and make it clear. So, for example, I could ask uh, please find the natural domain of. Uh, how about 7 divided by x minus uh, 5? And what I'm asking for you to do, I'm asking for you to tell me all of the x's that can be plugged in and, and, and the, resulting, uh, the resulting arithmetic expression is defined. Okay, so now I'm going to make a little discussion. The answer is just like one line. 
But, it, but to understand why that's the answer, it takes a little bit of discussion. So I'm going to write some discussion here that's not part of the answer. It's just part of the discussion. So, uh, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, is it okay to plug in 10 to this expression? How do you confirm or deny that? Yes. Hey, you just plug it in, right? And check. So if you plug in 10, well, the answer would be 7 over 5. And is that, a, is that a thing? Is 7 over 5 a, a number? Yeah? OK. How about, um, is it OK to plug in x equal to 0? Is that OK? OK. How do we confirm or deny it? Plug it in. OK. So that would be 7 over 0 minus 5, which is negative 7 over 5. Is that OK? All right. How about is it permissible to plug in uh, 5.1? Okay. How do we confirm or deny that? Plug it in. Same thing we always do, right? So 7 over 5.1 minus 5. Well, 5.1 minus 5 is 0.1. And then what's, what's 7 divided by 0.1? 70. Awesome. So is that okay? Okay. So now that we've had this brief little discussion, I imagine that to some of you there is something that obviously is not okay to plug in. What is just not going to be okay? Five. You just can't plug in five. Why not? It would cause a division by zero. Okay, so the natural domain is all reals except x equal to five. So that's the answer, and there's really there's really no work to show because this question is so um, so obvious. But you do need to write the answer. <laughs> Okay, good. But I'll never give you an exercise this simple. So, fine. Any questions about it? Okay. <clears throat> so, how about uh, again? Find the natural domain of, mm, how about, 3 times w plus 8 divided by w squared minus uh, 10 times w. And then minus 20. No, that's not what I want. Sorry. Minus 24. Okay, so my hope in giving you the previous exercise is that now that you've kind of seen the game, that when you see an expression like this, five, uh, x equal to 5 is like a stick in your eye. Like, oh yes, I can see that 5 is just not, never going to possibly work uh, for this one. Uh, this one is now is, is less obvious than the previous one. But I claim there's a way to make a little manipulation we can do to make this one just as obvious as the previous one. So what can we do? Yeah, let's factor it. We want to factor the denominator. So in particular, how, do, how are we going to do that? The sum product thingy. And notably, what's nice about the denominator? It's monic, right? 
Love it. That's the easy kind. Uh, fine. That means that we're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 24 and whose sum is negative 10. Okay, so we, we want the product to be negative 24 and we want the sum to be negative 10. I suspect you could just tell me right now. So minus 12. negative 12 and positive 2 will do the work for us. Uh, so uh, the factorization becomes 3 multiply w plus 8 and then divided by, so what's the factorization? Very good. w minus 12 multiply w plus 2. Any question about that factorization? So now I claim, now I claim uh, that it, it, it's, it's obvious which numbers are uh, not permissible. So it, would it be permissible to plug in w is, say, 100? Would that be OK? Yeah, right? Because this one would be 88 and this one would be 102, and this would be 308. And I have no idea what that arithmetic comes to, but the, we're, that's not the question. The question is just whether or not that's a thing. Uh, so what, what numbers are not OK? 12 and negative 2. They're out. Uh, as a result, the natural domain is all reals except W is 12, and W is negative 2. That's right. Uh, because, for example, at 12, the numerator is uh, 36 plus 8, so it's 44. Cool. Uh, then this term would be 14. This factor would be 14. But that one would be 0. And in the end, that ru ruins it. OK, good. Uh, a remark about the uh, natural domain of some, of, for example, absolute value. Well, let's, let's recall the definition of absolute value. The absolute value of x is defined in two clauses. It is x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And it is negative x uh, when x is less than 0. And the convention is that you number the clauses from top to bottom, starting with 1. So I have a question. Suppose I gave you a negative uh, x. Which clause would you use? Clause 2. So evidently, you can plug in any negative x. What if I gave you a positive x? Which, which clause would you use? Clause 1. So I asked about negative x's. I asked about positive x's. Have I asked about all the x's? Ah, but OK, 0, right? Don't forget about that. Uh, if, you, if, if I asked you to plug in 0, which clause would you use? 1. So, so I asked about negative x's. I asked about positive x's. I asked about 0. And you were always able to tell me which clause we're supposed to use. So, so what kinds of x's can you plug into the absolute value? Any x. All of them. So the natural domain is all reals. Because there's nothing that could go wrong, right? No divisions by zero, for example. There's nothing, nothing that could go wrong. OK. How about the natural domain of uh, radicals? Well, 
Two of the radicals are so common that they have special names, so I'll, I'll specifically mention them. The first one is square root. Square root. Uh, the square root of x uh, has natural domain what? So what kinds of things can you plug into the square root? Zero or positive, right? So, so for example, can you plug in 36? Yes. Yep, that'd be fine. Can you plug in pi? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that you can rattle off the, the value of square root of pi. I'm just asking if you can plug it in. Sure you can. Uh, can you plug in 0? What's the square root of 0? Zero, right? Can you plug in negative 36? This is not okay. So this has natural domain x greater than or equal to zero. It's just not permissible to plug in to, to plug in other other kinds of x's. Uh, what's the other um, radical that has a special name? No, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this. You can't, yeah? you can't call that natural has a natural domain. In the natural numbers of n, you can't say x? No, uh, because you have to say this, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the, remember that the set of naturals is the set of, po of positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh. etc. And there's plenty of numbers that are in between them. Okay. Yeah, so, for example, okay. right. Uh, so, for example, pi is not in the naturals. <clears throat> okay. What's the other uh, radical that has a special name? Cube root? And how is it denoted? How is it? How do you draw it, write it? Well, it's written just like square. It's written just like square root, except what? There's a three, There's a three right? Uh, this has natural domain. What? And zero, right? So all reals. Uh, because, uh, well, what's the cube root of eight? Two. Two. And what's the cube root of zero? Zero. What about the cube root of negative eight? Negative two. Negative two, right? Because if you had three copies of negative two, if you had three of them, you could multiply the first two together to get positive four. And then multiply the last one times that and get negative eight. Okay? The general case. Uh, the nth root of x has natural domain, uh, well, the nth root of x, back up, the nth root of x when n is even, okay, uh, because remember that uh, radicals, their behavior and definition uh, depends on the parity of n. Um, so the n is called the radical number. What's the radical number of the cube root? 3. And what is the radical number of the square root? 2. So right now I'm talking about the nth root of x when n is even. So this, would, this is the one that is like square root. nth root of x when n is even has natural domain what? Right, just like, just like a square root does. And nth root of x is in height when n is odd. And of course, that one is like what? Like cube root.
as natural domain what? All reals. Okay, any question about uh, these statements? We haven't used them in an exercise yet, but it's coming, I promise. Okay. Last thing is we need just a little bit of language to make the discussion a little easier. And this is the definition of the word argument. Uh, for expressions like absolute value of 13 times x squared plus 14 and uh, cube root of w minus 12, things like this. Uh, well, this has absolute value, and then we're putting a thing inside of the absolute value. And then this is cube root, and then we're putting a thing inside of the cube root. Uh, well, it's kind of clumsy to say the thing we're putting in the other thing. That's a, kind of a clumsy phrase to say. So there's a word that means the thing you're putting in the thing. Uh, these the thing you're putting in the thing they're called the argument So that's a, a nice vocabulary word so I don't have to keep saying the thing that's being put into the other thing. All right, so now I can ask. Please find the natural domain of the square root of uh, 5 times x minus... Eleven. Okay. So again, some discussion. It's not part of the, not part of the answer. This is just part of us understanding what's being asked. So in the first place, uh, would it be permissible to plug in x is ten? How do you confirm or deny that? Plug it in, right? So, well, that would be 5 multiply 10 subtract 11, which, through the powers of arithmetic, is what? 39. So square root of 39. So is that something we can do? Yeah. OK, how about, um, is it permissible to plug in, say, uh, x equal to, uh, I don't know, 4. Is that one okay? Yes. Yeah, that'd be okay. And we can confirm that by just plugging it in and watching what occurs. Well, that'd be 20 minus 11 in the, is, would be the argument, and that'd be square root of 9. And that's a thing. We can do that. How about x equal to 2? Is this OK? <laughs> Probably not, right? <laughs> OK, well, let's confirm or deny it with, uh, by plugging it in. So 5 times 2 minus 11. So that would be asking about the square root of negative 1. So, what's, so concerning this expression right here, what is the argument? negative 1. What must be true about the argument for square root? Non-negative, non positive or zero. Right. So, thi so this 
So this one is good. This one is good. This one is not good. Okay. That being the case then, now we can go on to the answer. Uh, the answer is that uh, we need the argument argument to uh, the, the radical to be greater than or equal to zero, right? And for this, for the question, what is the argument? 5x minus 11, which means that the answer to the question is the following. We need to do, we need to calculate 5 times x minus 11 greater than or equal to 0. And we need to solve this inequality for x. So how can we solve this inequality for x? Add 11 to both sides. What is the new left-hand side? 5x. And what is the new right-hand side? 11. Now what? Divide by 5. What is the new left-hand side? X. And what is the new right-hand side? 11 over 5, which I'll write as, what, 2.2? So you can plug in 2.2. You can plug in 2.3. You can plug in 2.000001. Uh, but plugging in 2.19 is just not OK. You just can't do that. Won't, won't ever be OK. And so uh, this is the natural domain. But do understand that this is a university level math class. And even though that's the natural domain, and when you do enough of these, that's obvious, this is the answer, which is understand what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you don't show me the work, you might as well not even turn in your, your exercise. OK? Good. Any questions about this before we do a quiz? OK, please put away your things.